Does it work? Yes, wonderful. Thank you very much. Works um, as well? Yes. Thank you very much for inviting us, Turtle Stitch, being part of this uh, conference here. We kind of stumbled into that uh, community Scratch and Snap uh, actually two years ago in uh, the Scratch conference in Amsterdam. Uh, it happened that uh, Michael um, made a fork uh, of Snap and uh, combined it with our idea of uh, coding for embroideries and uh, Jens found out about it and uh, so this uh, was the first connection uh, to the Scratch and Snap community. I mean actually I've been uh, around in this uh, area in this field of work for a longer time so it was in the in the end it was it was not a, a coincident that uh, we, we worked with uh, Snap or at this graphical programming interface. So so, uh, in those days, two years ago, we had our first uh, kind of demo version running and presented at the Scratch conference in Amsterdam. Uh, Susan Ettenheim uh, was part at a, a workshop there. We had a master class at, uh, at, at the WAG and uh, it um, st so it started a good uh, kind of cooperation uh, with Susan over the last two years and we worked with this uh, first uh, demo version for a long time. We did uh, quite a lot of uh, workshops with kids and uh, Bernard had a, had a really good uh, term for doing this kind of work when you, when you develop while, uh, doing, while working intensively with the target group. We found out, uh, by the way, that the target group for this project is pretty big. It's uh, small kids, it depends, it's, it's uh, uh, also um, in German you say Sekundarstufe uh, 1, so it's uh, up from 10 years, you can also uh, work with smaller kids and it's also very interesting for adults too, we found out. We did a lot of uh, different uh, <laughs> testings and uh, and patterns. These uh, these are some samples of patterns we did so far. But what we found out uh, when we worked uh, uh, over this longer period is that there are a lot of things uh, we could we could also improve. And we did it. We, we worked really hard, especially in the last year. We had uh, Michael put in a lot of work into into the uh, kind of relaunch and uh, reprogramming of uh, Turtle Stitch. And he will tell you. Uh, um, uh, right right uh, away about what he did. Um, there is uh, something I want uh, to say and I put it in right now. I want to put in the thank you page at this point of the presentation because I know I will not reach to do it later. <laughs> it's uh, the Turtle Stitch. We are a pretty small team doing it uh, in uh, Vienna, Austria, but there are a lot of uh, people got uh, feedback and also uh, joined us in, in working with us very closely. In Vienna, it's uh, mainly Michael Aschauer who uh, is uh, working intensively since many years uh, with me and it's also Tina Hochkogler, who, who is supporting us intensively in the in the graphics design. Susan Ettenheim in New York City worked so uh, hard with uh, Jennifer. She 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 was uh, really. Um, we were very lucky that uh, Jennifer, her student, uh, also started working with it, and it was for us a kind of really a, a brilliant uh, test situation also uh, to see what Jennifer needs. And Jennifer gave a lot of uh, really important feedback about how she is uh, slowly getting into, into the process of uh, working with the program. There are four uh, names in the third line. It's uh, four students who joined the last uh, three or four months in Vienna. They did their bachelor works about Turtle Stitch. Uh, Lucia is uh, um, a Spanish um, um, I think practicant, practitioner, I think is the word in English, who is in fashion design and she started coding. She's a very uh, interested in the whole maker scene and it was also great to have her. Egbert Althammer is uh, um, actually, he is a mathematis mathem mathematician and a coder and he uh, looked into the, um, into the uh, programming of, uh, of the filling patterns. I mean, Turtle Stitch is a lot about uh, the turtle move and it's this concept of using uh, the logo programming uh, ideas and um, getting it into into the making area by uh, 
by uh, using an embroidery machine. So the path of the turtle is in the end the line of the yarn which is getting st stitch stitched with the embroidery machine. Uh, so Egbert cared a little bit about getting, getting um, um, spaces, uh, spaces filled. Wie sagt man noch zu uh, Flächen füllen? Wie kann man da noch sagen? Fläche, zu viele, zu viele uh, fields, to fill fields. Yeah, okay, sorry, I didn't really know this term. Lisa Turk, she uh, uh, did uh, a lot of work into looking uh, uh, and analyzing the Austrian cu curriculum system because it's really uh, also uh, a big uh, thing and not such an easy task to get a project like Turtle Stitch, which combines uh, programming and making into the educational uh, system of school. She did this work and uh, I'm happy that she did it because it would be it would have been very hard for me. It's pretty complicated, a little bit similar than uh, Beat Duberly uh, described it as it is in, in uh, Switzerland. <laughs> uh, Susanne Palmetzhofer did some workshops with me, especially for the Tarchet uh, group, uh, girls uh, 17, 18 years or younger. Ursula Waltz, many of you know probably Ursula. She uh, put Turtle Stitch as a part of her curriculum in Greenell uh, University. Unfortunately, she cannot be part of the uh, conference here. She applied, but I think she had personal reasons why she couldn't, uh, she couldn't come. Artemis Peppert, I worked with her very intensively in uh, the end of last year, and it was wonderful to have uh, such a, a great person working also so hard on our first version, which was, uh, I mean, the, the version of Turtle Stitch, which is up now, is much uh, better, and I will uh, be happy to, to continue her work uh, with her. Uh, good, and thank you very much, Snap Team, Bernard, very supportive all the time, uh, Jens uh, also, and all the rest. I was part of also at the, at the online course uh, of, of edX, I did it. It was uh, really interesting for me. NetIDAT is uh, the, the place who is uh, supporting us in Austria. It's a private foundation who gave us a little bit of money to do it for, the, for two times. Okay, and now I hand over to uh, Michael, who is uh, explaining a little bit uh, about uh, mainly what he did the last year. Yeah, just give you a very brief overview about what's new with Turtle Stitch. Uh, I will show you a few examples and demos later on, depending on how much time we have. First of all, we have a website that's turtlestitch.org. I hope you already know that. We also have our own kind of cloud and platform solution. Well, it's not really our own. Uh, we owe a lot to Bernard from Beetleblocks for taking the Beetle clouds and turning turn it into the Turtle Cloud. <laughs> um, just make this full screen. So you see, we sorted the the, the projects in different categories. So there. Are you can just browse through it if you want. Certainly we have to... So next to sharing the project, you also can uh, command the project, you can like projects, so the classical minimal functions of a, of a kind of social platform. Still lots of things to do, but it's, it's a start at least. So in the beginning, in the early beginning, is two years ago, this was just a quick and dirty prototype. Uh, meanwhile, we did some things a little bit better. <laughs> uh, one of the main uh, things we see here, if we open up this uh, snap environment, is actually it's pretty much stripped down. So we removed all the fancy stuff like. Uh, uh, s sprites and costumes and cloning and inheritation uh, to keep things simple. Remember, the turtle is represents in a way the needle of this machine, and there is just one needle. There might be certain occasion where it uh, might be useful, and we still f try to figure out the solution how to integrate this with without confusing the audience too much. But you still can try to import other projects from uh, from the normal snap environment, but there is no guarantee that it will work. So mo one of the other main uh, additions we have a stage. 
that is uh, had a 3D engine, 3D ren rendering engine in the background, uh, like Beetle Blocks again. So you can pan and zoom over what you're doing here. And we have a few functions that are tied to the, to the embroidery process. But before I show you some simple examples on what you should keep in mind if you if you do an embroidery, if you design an embroidery with Snap, I, I would like Susan, if, if she wants to talk a little bit of, about what she's actually did in school with the kids with it. So I was in Amsterdam and I heard there was something that had to do with stitching and coding. I'd been learning to code for many years. I took a Unix class when Unix was brand new. I'm dating myself a little here. and. Um, but when I saw the sewing machine and the embroidery, I said, this is amazing. And I went back to school that fall. Uh, we, we were able to fund uh, through the help of a lot of people, especially Fred Wilson, uh, who was a big venture capitalist in New York City, started our funding off. My own principal contributed to the funding for the sewing machine. And we got the sewing machine, and Jennifer and some other people discovered it. And I realized I needed to become a better coder to do better embroidery. And at that point, um, New York City has a coding initiative, and I could teach AP computer science principles with uh, Python or with C or, and I thought, well, that's nice, but it's not going to help me with my embroidery. It's not going to help me with my digital paper cutter. It's not going to help me with my 3D printers, all things I like making, and this would. So because of the sewing machine and turtle stitch and Jennifer, I am now working hard to be a better programmer and coder. And I think if, if that happened for me, we can flip it. So we're going to try to, we are now working to align uh, sewing projects to the BJC curriculum. And don't tell New York City, but no, Francisco knows I'm doing that. But I just want, um, so we're going to, I'm not going to talk anymore because I want to unveil what we've been working on, but I want Jennifer to share one reason with why she's working on it. Well, before using Turtle Stitch, I didn't really know how to code. So um, after using Turtle Stitch, it taught me to experiment with the blocks and use trial and error to create patterns. I say some some words to, uh, to what what you see on the screen. Uh, it was also an initiative and uh, an, an inspiration from Susan that we should uh, work out uh, that we should work on cards, and uh, we did it. And we we did uh, we 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 took Jennifer's input on uh, on uh, the themes we we um, we presented. Sorry. Mm. So we have uh, 13 uh, starting uh, so card. We did 13 cards uh, the, which help uh, when you start working with turtle stitch. I show you the three cards I put out. This is the this is the move uh, the card that uh, is about moving, and uh, you see there is one big uh, difference uh, to the to the to, uh, to other projects. You can not just use a singular move uh, 200 step, for example, because you have got to subdivide the distances in order to get a regular a suit uh, line done. It's about the quality of the embroidery in, in the end. You cannot just jump for a long distance with the embroidery machine. You've got to do subdivisions. And this is why there are some uh, additional blocks implemented. This is uh, the thing about uh, the moving. Uh, then uh, the file formats, there uh, is a, a, a card which describes the file formats. It's just the regular uh, XML that it is uh, the, the projects in Snap and uh, in Turtle Stitch uh, saved in an XML. And uh, the file format for the embroidery uh, we use is the .dst. It's an industrial file format for embroidery and a Melco EXP file format uh, which we implemented to use. It's a little bit described here. Uh, 
you can uh, in the end just save it and uh, save it on a an, um, USB stick and feed it into the embroidery machine. Another thing is about dimension dimensions. Michael did really great work in implementing this uh, dimension thing. He rebuilt the whole stage area. This was a big issue after the first uh, after the first version of Turtle Stage. We really needed to zoom in and zoom out and get an idea about the dimension of the pattern because it's critical if you have a pattern that is too large uh, to load it into the machine. So it's important that this is done very well uh, in the uh, in in the creation process on the on the software side on the on the program already. So you can switch also in between uh, inches and centimeters, and uh, you get the stitches counted and the dimensions shown here. So this is the these are the main uh, cards, the m most important cards that are relevant for doing design with embroidery. And Michael is showing you an example now. And there's one thing we forgot to, to, to mention. This is a, a demo session. So if you have your laptop and open up turtlestitch.org, you can create a pattern while this uh, demo or this session lasts. We have one uh, embroidery machine, which of course is a little bit of a bottleneck, but you might have the chance to, to get uh, your, em your design embroidered onto this machine after this session or during the, during the poster session later. Tomorrow. Or tomorrow. <laughs> that, that's a great service. Yeah. So I, I start with a very simple example to show you what uh, what uh, uh, what is the speciality of creating embroidery pattern and what you keep, should should keep in mind. So every one of us knows how to build uh, a square, I guess. So we just do a square. And four, and we already see there is a red square. Why is this a red square? We didn't even set the band down, and why is this red? So uh, we still remember there is just one needle, and the turtle represents the needle. And in embroidery, there is no such thing as not doing a stitch. So you always make a line somehow. There are just two different kinds of stitches. There is the stitch, the normal stitch, which uh, does what we expect it to, does, to do. And there is a jump stitch, a so-called jump stitch. <coughs> and the quality of a normal stitch is it's normally limited in length. So it depends a bit on the on the file format or on the manufacturers of the machine on what kind of the maximal length of a, the maximum stitch length is. Uh, for instance, with the EXP Melco format, it's 12.7 millimeters. So clever guys might figure out why it's 12.7 millimeters. It's the half of 255. <laughs> the DSD file format has has another limitation. I think it's around 10 millimeters. I, I don't remember exactly. So the reason why this is limited is that long stitches aren't very stable. So if you make a stitch along your whole t-shirt, it might not be very durable. So normal stitches are limited, and there are jump stitches which are not limited, but the main purpose is to, to, to put the needle into a new position. So normally if you make a part of an embroidery and then you jump to another location and make another part of an embroidery and you cut out this, this jump, stump, jump stitch in connecting these two uh, parts of the pattern. So we need to do, get our band down first. Then I reset everything. That's a new block I, I added, but it's just a shortcut for clear the screen and go back to the original location. And we do the square again. It's a bit small, so we can zoom in here. Uh, 
remember I told you before there is a limitation for for the stitch length, and if we if we have a look at the dimension here, we see that. Uh, this square is actually two centimeters by two centimeters, which is too long for a normal stitch. <laughs> so if you would try to stitch this or try to export this in, in turtle stitch, it would automatically add stitches at the maximum uh, supported stitch length of the file format. <laughs> uh, why is it two centimeters? I mean, the dimensions we use in, in turtle stitch are a bit arbitrary, honestly. So they grew out of legacy. And one could say that 100 steps in, in, in the turtle stitch environment is roughly, or is exactly two centimeters. I don't explain why now, but sometimes I would prefer it would be 100 millimeters. That would be logical. But on the other hand, it doesn't discriminate between the <laughs> imperial or the metric units, so both have to rethink about their dimensions and used units. So, to make this a nice embroidery, we have to subdivide this into useful uh, stitch lines. Therefore, we, we created a uh, two new blocks, which just subdivide the, the length either by by a number of steps or by a length of, of steps. So we just exchange this block to the move 100 by 10 steps. And then we have, you see these small blue dots here. These represent stitches. So now we try to make something uh, that resembles a classical turtle graphic. We create another loop. Not here. Turn it. Let's make it 20. And 18. So this is Jennifer's pinwheel example, which is also presented on a card. So we have a pinwheel, and that's uh, a, good, a good example to show you the next thing that could be problematic with creating embroidery patterns. We have this very nice pinwheel with 20 squares, but there is one point in the middle under the turtle now. We can actually hide the turtle. This point, and there are a lot of stitches onto the same point, which is a problem for the machine. I don't know if there is a, an absolute number of maximum stitches. Uh, I usually say it's about uh, 10, uh, 10 uh, stitches on one uh, point of the textile. 10 or 15 is also possible. But it's, if you ever uh, used an ordinary sewing machine, you know about the problem. It's just like sewing. So you th you've got to think about that when you design a, an embroidery pattern. But uh, I mean, there are not so many limitations, but are some. And this is one, the physical situation or the p physical uh, thing of the, of the textile, of course. Yeah, otherwise it might break things. So what we do here is we just add another slight offset here. Well, that's not really what I wanted to do, but it looks good. It works. <laughs> <laughs> so this is actually now a pretty good quality embroidery pattern, and we could uh, I've saved it now into one of the formats. Can you show how to do it? I mean, sure. it's easy, but it's easy. As I told before, we have several file formats. There is the Melco HP and the Dashima DST, which are embroidery formats. You can also export it as an SVG, and you just kind of download it like a file uh, wherever. So and then you have to... Let's, uh, Unfortunately, we don't have a Bluetooth or Wi-Fi enabled embroidery machine. I don't know if this exists. So you have to go an old fashioned way and uh, copy it to a USB stick and then go over to the machine. And Andrea will kind of start this stitching process now. I will do that right away. But I'm so curious uh, about if your uh, fractal uh, 
if your idea about uh, drawing the fractals, if they would work for twelve stitch too, we, we we need to talk later, Jens, or you know what I mean. I don't know. Well, the costume parts won't work, so. <laughs> So I just switch on the machine. Ah, it's okay. I come along. It's not. It's not so many things to be done. This is this is an embroidery, an ordinary embroidery machine. We really try to work with the cheapest ma machines around. So uh, for this embroidery machine, uh, this is about 700 euros I paid. Uh, unfortunately, embroidery machines are in general expensive. But uh, yeah, there are there are. This is the. The, the cheap level where you can get that. Okay, need to put it down. There is, uh, where is it? Wait. The yeah, we don't have a webcam. We could. <laughs> you can't show. We can't show you the stitching process now. The USB stick is uh, just plugged in, and I'm going to look where the embroidery file is. No, this is not the right one. It's in BDX. Yes. The pinwheel is in there, and you load it, and you can adjust it. You see the frame, and actually putting down the embroidery foot and start embroidering. Unfortunately, we don't have a camera here, but we have the presentation later at the poster session too. We will set it up on a table outside, and if you do an embroidery, I'm uh, also available later to uh, show it or to embroider your personal so this will take uh, two or three minutes until the stitching is done. Uh, meanwhile, I can show you one or two other things if, as, as long as we have time. Pardon? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can reset it. You just clear the screen and then reset the... The embroidery. I just preview. I'll show you a brief example you might have already seen. It uh, uh, it, it went some rounds in, in Twitter, and so it's just a good example to show you. You can actually use some APIs or some some stuff from the web to create your embroidery pattern. So in that case, I made a <laughs> I made an embroidered series of a I embroidered version of the of the of a temperature series over the last thousand of years. So I just start this now. It takes a little bit time to get and process the data. <laughs> so for which period is it? It's the last thousand years. Ah, okay. So, but. <coughs> It's not prepared for this kind of screen. So this is how it looks. And this is how the code looks. It's a bit Yes, but then there's the here screen. and others. Maybe you should hide the code. <laughs> I think you well, can. <laughs> the important part is here. You have the. Yeah, OK. You get the data here from a text file, actually, that's located on my server because I already merged two data sets. But you could use it to, to grab data from an API or wherever you want and then just do the usual list processing. Uh, this is actually an unnecessary part, as I see now. Uh, if dealing with data from some sources, one of the main issues always is how to deal with messy data. So a lot of your time and effort goes into cleaning the data and defining some strategies what to do with the data that is missing. Um. So I want to say something about uh, being being simple in the work with 12 stitch. It uh, maybe looks at, it it should be simple, and we tried hard to uh, to to get it on the on a really uh, kind of simple basis uh, to be able to to teach it. Uh, and the cards we did with Jennifer were very supportive. I used them in the first uh, workshop, and it was uh, brilliant to get uh, this this guidance of these really simple steps about how to get in. There are some 
some coding samples and then you can you can see how to build up and uh, what you can do you can in in general you can do really simple things with uh, turtle stitch you can start when you do a workshop by just uh, of course looking into an uh, a code that is already finished and start just turning the numbers and the, the different uh, uh, parameters and uh, look what what comes out. This is a way where you can you can start uh, um, presenting or um, uh, teaching it on a simple way. If you don't have a lot of time, for example, one or two hours in a workshop for 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 kids with, which are very young. And on the other side, you can also make very very complicated things like uh, turtle coding can be very very uh, interesting and it can you can move very far into into coding. And uh, this is too to be honest, it's also something that uh, really attracts me very much. I'm not a coder. Uh, actually, I'm, uh, I was an art student uh, and I, 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 li I learned to love coding and that's why this uh, project came out. And it really attracts me personally a lot. I think, Susan, you feel the same. And uh, I think also Jennifer got a little bit of it and that's why she really uh, uh, tried so hard in getting deeper and deeper. And, and this is, it's funny, but uh, this kind of getting uh, uh, physical and uh, doing these sort of things, they have this uh, kind of, uh, uh, is, it, is it correct to say attitude or they have this kind of quality that they, they can start attracting you and this is uh, something that you, you don't want to, to stop doing it. So that's actually what yeah, we, we don't want to stop you from having lunch now. You know. And we wanted to say we have some stacks of this demo version cards here. Uh, it would be re we will upload them. They are for free, of course. Uh, you can you can print it out. Uh, we will probably also do some and uh, offer them for um, for sale. Okay, and uh, it would be great to get a little bit of uh, feedback. Uh, I mean the wording and things like this for us as not native speakers it's also hard to do it to do a, a good English uh, curriculum Susan supported a lot but here are the professionals who are so so good in doing this kind of work it would be really great to get feedback so thank you from my side thank you